Fifth grader Amy Mahalovic went to Bay Village Middle School on Friday wearing green pants, a lavender and green sweatshirt, and carrying a denim and red backpack. Police found Amy's bike locked up at school, but they haven't found Amy. No, we have no new developments since yesterday. Uh, we conducted searches today. We had four dogs, a helicopter, uh, approximately 40 police officers and uh, various law enforcement officers from uh, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Uh, we had four of our police fire divers out today checking uh, bodies of water in the area, uh, and we have come up with nothing. Are you about to give up hope? Or? Absolutely not. We'll keep trying. Amy was last seen on Friday afternoon at this Bay Village shopping center. It's right across the street from the police department. She had gone into Baskin Robbins for some ice cream with her friends, and then later was seen talking with a man. Police describe the man as white, in his early 30s, about 5'9", of medium build, with dark hair, a bald spot in the back, and round glasses. One of Amy's friends reportedly told police that Amy said she was to meet someone who claimed to be a friend of the family to go buy her mother a surprise gift. The Crime Stoppers number to call is 252-7463 for a $2,000 reward if you have information. Bay Village is a quiet community of 18,000 people. Lieutenant Wilson says this kind of crime is rare. Well, I've been here 23 years and it hasn't happened. An abduction like this? No. A little girl? No. A little child? No. It was anything but business as usual today at Bay Village Middle School. Shortly after leaving here last Friday, 10-year-old Amy Mahalovic was abducted. Caution was the byword today as police continued to close the school grounds in search of anything out of the ordinary. And children who normally walk or take the bus home found parents anxiously waiting outside to drive them. A lot of rumors, uh, obviously a lot of concern. Bye. You as a parent, how do you feel? Grieved. Amy was last seen at the Bay Village Square shopping plaza, a popular after-school hangout for kids. She reportedly told classmates it was here that she was to meet a family friend who would take her on a shopping spree. We also have reason to believe that Amy left with that individual from that location and went to another area where they may have gone shopping, and that would be a mall or a shopping center somewhere in the area. Amy's abductor has been described as a white male, 35 to 45 years old, approximately 5'8", and wearing glasses. A $10,000 reward has been offered for information on Amy's whereabouts and the identity of her abductor. This quiet, upscale community is totally unaccustomed to this type of trauma. The Mahalovic abduction is on the minds and lips of everyone in town, and authorities fear that with each day that passes, lessens the likelihood of her safe return. In Bay Village, David Lane reporting for the 10 o'clock news. Margaret Mahalovic sat next to a candle burning in I, in fact, would like to ask anybody in the Cleveland area to light a white candle for Amy each day. Um, I think we all had light her way home. And if there are candles burning all over, she's got to come back. She's got to come back. I've always taught them the rules. You never go with anyone anywhere, but that's how we got through her, through her soft heart. She wanted to do something for mom, and it was supposed to be kept a secret. The kindness of many people keeps Margaret going, like this huge card signed by Bay Village High School students. First uh, couple of four or five days, you know, you spend 24 hours a day crying your eyes out and saying, why, why me, why me, why me, Amy? And I guess there is no answer to that question, because. Uh, it's, it's, this is proven it can happen anywhere, anytime. But um, after a while, you still cry. Tonight, people prayed for Amy, her family, and her friends. Six Bay Village churches held a prayer vigil for Amy's safe return. Oh, pray God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't wait for that day. Marshall tells us now, Bay Village Police and the FBI are continuing their round-the-clock
Unlock search. The search for Amy has lasted for four months. This picture of the Bay Village girl has been placed in every public place possible with the hope that someone, somewhere, would have information leading to her whereabouts. It involves the kidnapping of a 10-year-old girl. Nationally televised programs profiled the abduction. And last Tuesday, authorities announced what seemed to be at the time a ray of hope, a reported sighting at a Tulsa, Oklahoma shopping mall. But the tragic end was closer to home. A female jogger was jogging this morning at approximately 7.30, and uh, she spotted something in the field and went off the field and checked, and it was a body. Throughout the day, federal agents combed the area, searching for evidence that might provide some clues about who may have done this to any youngster. Late this afternoon, authorities confirmed the news that we had hoped that we would never have to hear. The Cuyahoga Co County Coroner's Office examined the body that body has been positively identified as that of Amy Mahalovic. Dental records and fingerprints were used to confirm the coroner's report. They say Amy's death was a homicide. Uh, I can only say that uh, there were stab wounds to the left side of the neck. Can you say how many? No, I can't say that. Any uh, possibility of sexual molestation? Uh, I can't say that at this time. 35 FBI agents were assigned to the Mahalovic case. 100,000 man hours had been logged. Practically everyone involved in the investigation were clinging to hope that Amy would be found alive. Well, it, uh, it certainly isn't what we were all and every one of you two were hoping for. What he had done is he used the story to concoct that she was missing to cover up the fact that he had uh, murdered uh, the little girl. The little girl was Latasha Jackson. Last February, Cleveland police launched a massive search for the eight-year-old after her stepfather reported she had wandered away from a downtown Burger King. Two days later, her body was found under an RTA bridge on East 89th. She suffered multiple stab wounds and had been sexually assaulted. The investigation revealed that her stepfather was the killer. Not a classic case of no, an abduction, no. but an abduction yes. nonetheless. Yes. The results are all the same. They're the same. Each year, thousands of children disappear without a trace. The most distressing category is that of stranger abduction. All across the country, their faces are posted in supermarkets, gas stations, drugstore windows, and banks, anywhere in hopes of drawing a tip on the case. We feel that eventually, somebody will give us the tip that will uh, maybe tie it all together, and uh, we'll be able to, uh, to resolve this. One of the most difficult kinds of abductions to investigate is when the victim is somehow lured, as in the case of Amy Mahalovic. If a victim is just snatched off of the street, obviously they're going to raise a commotion. That's going to draw attention. People will see vehicles. People will see a struggle. Uh, in this case, the victim does not know uh, at this point that she or he is a victim. Bay Village Police and the FBI have devoted over 100,000 hours while investigating over 3,000 leads in the case. Less than 30 miles. Within 30 miles of the abduction site is usually where the victim is found, either alive or dead. One of the growing disadvantages of the investigation is time. It's been three months since Amy's disappearance from this Bay Village shopping center. Now it's even tougher to get leads when they ask people, can you help us out on October 27, 1989? And a lot of them just can't remember. Maybe they have the information, maybe they don't. But that's one of the primary uh, concerns right now is the passage of time. We're real close to Amy, and I don't, I can't ever foresee any of us getting that hope. Um, we firmly believe she's alive. We just need to find her. Uh, we need to find her. As investigators work feverishly to unravel the Mahalovic case, they are haunted by the fact that children continue to violate the commandment, thou shalt not talk to strangers. In this investigation, I've been involved in the Mahalovic investigation. Children continue to talk to strangers, either telephonically or in person. And I know their parents have told them don't do that, but they continue to do it. I don't think you can tell a child enough, don't talk to strangers. John Walsh's six-year-old son, Adam, died at the hands of a stranger eight years ago. 
Over the years, he's lobbied for child protection legislation and formed the Adam Walsh Child Resource Center for missing and exploited children. When you find that pedophile and he's been arrested eight or nine times, as many of them have, and convicted eight or nine times, we must decide it as, as a society that this person cannot function in society, can't be around children. Carcerate him somewhere, put him out, put him in New Jersey, put him on the moon, I'm kidding about New Jersey, but somewhere we have to come to grips with the repeat offender is that no prevention program is going to stop a 180-pound man from grabbing your six-year-old daughter. But there is consolation in the fact that Ohio is one of the most enlightened states when it comes to child protection laws. They become a model for the nation. Signed it state Senator Lee Fisher show. drafted the legislation uh, requiring three measures. Three One, that we have personal safety instruction in all of our schools. Number two, that the police immediately, immediately look for a missing child, not wait even 24 hours. And number three, that the Attorney General's office issues a missing children bulletin to all schools and local law enforcement agencies. Over the years, through education and legislation, sizable gains have been made in combating child abduction. But short of keeping your child under lock and key 24 hours a day, there is no way of totally eliminating the risk. Said one parent, we did all the right things, and still our boy is gone. David Lane reporting for the 10 o'clock news. Margaret Mihaljevic fought back tears he and talking with reporters about the abduction of her daughter. She thanked the community for prayers and support and made an emotional plea to anyone holding the key to unlocking the mystery surrounding Amy's disappearance. I asked. As Amy's mother on this her 11th birthday to give us the gift of that information. The best gift that can be given Amy today is her safe return to our family. Today also marked the beginning of Amy Assisting Missing Youth, a nonprofit organization to help establish educational crime prevention programs while financially helping other families of abducted children. So that not only for Amy Mihaljevic, but for anybody that might be abducted in the future. Uh, this organization will be here. It will be part of the community. Today, the shopping center where Amy was grabbed is decorated for Christmas, but still dedicated to finding Amy. White ribbons wrapped around nearby trees fly in the chilly winds along Wolf Road. Flyers and information on Amy's case is distributed by volunteer workers at City Hall, where Amy's family has posted a giant birthday card for their daughter, saying the only real birthday gift will be her safe return. The so-called Amy Fund is an encouraging sign from the community, not only for Amy's parents, but also for members of the Bay Village Police Department. The around-the-clock investigation here has been tough on personnel who still maintain a never-give-up kind of attitude. I'd say rather than being frustrated, the, these people are determined, mm -hmm. uh, and that shows. They just uh, keep trying as hard as they can and doing everything possible. And Margaret Mihaljevic would give anything to see her daughter safe and sound. We love you, Amy. We love you. We support you. We send everything good out of our hearts to you. Send some message. Find some way to come home. In Bay Village, Jack Marshall reporting for the 10 o'clock news. Well, we're encouraged uh, every day we get leads, uh, especially after your broadcasts. Uh, we follow them up. Uh, uh, we're still looking. We're handing out a new composite photo of uh, the individual. Police were busy plastering new composite sketches of the suspect throughout Bay Village shopping plaza today. It was here that Amy was abducted last Friday. The new sketches show subtle differences, including the version minus the glasses. And they're shocked. featured a composite drawing similar to the Bay Village suspect. But that's where the similarity ends. Meanwhile, police were bombarded with anxious callers. Out there, the victim uh, was a male, 11 years old. He was abducted by an individual wearing a ski mask and who had a gun. Here, of course, Amy's abduction was accomplished as a part of a ruse. And part of the con involved luring Amy to the Bay Village shopping plaza. Phone call to Amy to let her to believe the suspect was a friend of the family surprise gift to celebrate a job promotion. Well, I think that there was a familiarity. Uh, he was familiar with Amy. He knew how to contact her. He knew information about Amy's mother. Police are now asking that anyone in the Cleveland area whose child has received a similar call to contact the Bay Village Police. Bay Village
Orange Police and the FBI aren't thumbing their nose at any clues, including the remotest of possible leads. Right now, time is the enemy, as the abductor's trail grows colder by the day. In Bay Village, David Lane reporting for the 10 o'clock news. The search for Amy has lasted for four months. This picture of the Bay Village girl has been placed in every public place possible with the hope that someone, somewhere, would have information leading to her whereabouts. It involves the kidnapping of a 10-year-old girl. Nationally televised programs profiled the abduction. And last Tuesday, authorities announced what seemed to be at the time a ray of hope, a reported sighting at a Tulsa, Oklahoma shopping mall. But the tragic end was closer to home. A female jogger was jogging this morning, approximately 7.30, and uh, she spotted something in the field and went off the field and checked, and there was a body. Throughout the day, federal agents combed the area, searching for evidence that might provide some clues about who may have done this to any youngster. Late this afternoon, authorities confirmed the news that we had hoped that we would never have to hear. The Cuyahoga Co County Coroner's Office examined the body that body has been positively identified as that of Amy Mahalovic. Dental records and fingerprints were used to confirm the coroner's report. They say Amy's death was a homicide. Uh, I can only say that uh, there were stab wounds to the left side of the neck. Can you say how many? No, I can't say that. Any uh, possibility of sexual molestation? Uh, I can't say that at this time. 35 FBI agents were assigned to the Mahalovic case. 100,000 man hours had been logged. Practically everyone involved in the investigation were clinging to hope that Amy would be found alive. Well, it, uh, it certainly isn't what we were all and every one of you two were hoping for. The sounds of rural Ashland County warn of a passing train, a tragedy averted. The sights along County Road 1181 warn of a tragedy committed. White ribbons have been strung in memory of Amy Mahalovic. Amy's body was discovered right alongside 1181 last week. The ground has been scraped by investigators for soil sample analysis. Another portion is covered with flowers left by shock residents who now have more personal reasons to help in finding Amy's killer. Because he was bent down, so I couldn't see him that well. Larry Schuster has told the FBI an amazing story. On the day Amy's body was found, Schuster says he saw a suspicious looking stranger drive back and forth near the discovery site. And he claims the driver looked very much like the police composite sketch of Amy's abductor. As I was leaving, coming up towards 224, that's when I seen him going back down again. Back up, I think he was coming up this way to see what was going on and see if anybody found him, found the girl. Amy Mahalovic is one girl this community will never forget, as a card on the flowers proclaims from the people of New London, Ohio. We're sorry, Amy. There is not only a sense of pity being shown by the people of Ashland County, but also a sense of precaution as well. Even though many neighbors tell me, in their opinion, Amy was probably killed someplace else, they say they plan to play it safe, just in case her abductor is still in the area. This is the land on which Kenneth Myers spent much of his life as a grain farmer and a frequent hunter. He says he now has frequent thoughts about Amy. I told my wife the other day, I said, you know, you see this on TV all the time where they go out in the, in the country and find a body. I said, but you never figure it's going to happen right in your back door. Myers claims children are being watched more closely as well as property, while the community awaits the arrest of Amy Mahalovic's killer. In Ashland County, Jack Marshall reporting for the 10 o'clock news. May I help you? Yes, it is. After more than four months, the Amy Center today closed down operations here in the Bay Village Engineer's Office. More than 200 volunteers got involved from as far away as Hudson and Wadsworth. They spent thousands of hours distributing more than a million and a half Amy posters nationwide. Today, volunteers talked of the frustrating search for Amy's killer. Either that or they're either looking for some you know, specific thing. One of the many volunteers here at the Amy Center was 17-year-old Adam Zambetti of Hinckley. A couple of months ago, Adam composed and recorded a song for Amy, a song that was to be played on area radio stations. Amy, why were you taken from us? I feel that music touches a lot of people, and I just thought if the 
you know, whoever took her had her, or, you know, maybe heard the song, would bring her home. Amy's mother, Margaret Mihalovic, came by to meet Adam and thank all the volunteers. She says even though it's too late for Amy, she still wants Adam's song released. It's a plea to bring our children home. Amy was one. Fortunately for our family, she received a lot of support from the community, but she's only one. Jacob Wetterling is still missing, Melissa Braden, Alexis out of Kentucky, and numerous others. Howard Kimball founded the Amy Center, putting in more than 12 hours a day. We made the uh, greater part of this country, or at least uh, at least the eastern the eastern half of the United States, uh, quite well aware that we had a missing girl named Amy. Remember that we love you, and we'll try to carry on. In Bay Village, Kevin Donahue reporting for the 10 o'clock news. As the sun was setting behind the Mahalovic's Bay Village home, the family was inside grieving, in no condition to speak. And most of the neighbors were too stunned for words. Amy was in fifth grade at Bay Village Middle School, and as school let out, the faces of students spoke anger and despair. Being kidnapped and she, she's with God now, so I'll be fine. Sick. Hope you just find him and arrest him. Tonight at the police department, tears were shed, but the Bay Village chief assured the community authorities will do all they can to arrest Amy's killer. Anytime you uh, discover a crime scene, obviously there will be more evidence available to you. At the shopping center where Amy was abducted October 27th, parents with children by their side were saddened but not surprised. Disgust that something like that can, is ha can, can happen, mm -hmm. uh, but you sort of were expecting it after such a long time. I just feel really sad. I, I just uh, I called my husband and told him it worked, and uh, we are, we are of course hope for a different outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, makes me feel really lucky. Amy's posters up all over town will eventually come down. So will the ribbons tied up for Amy that are now worn and torn. But her memory will stay as this tiny tree grows. Students planted the tree for Amy after she disappeared. The only thing I want to say to them is that there were rainbows above their house, and that kind of signified to me that maybe she had gone to heaven and she was safe now. The community prayed to the saint of lost causes, and although Amy's body was found today, many feel it isn't a lost cause. Amy now can rest in peace, and for the Mahalovics, as terrible and tragic as the news was today, their long ordeal of waiting and not knowing is over, and the grieving can begin. In Bay Village, Marianne Herman reporting for the 10 o'clock news. Let any gift be a living remembrance to one of two organizations. The Lake Erie Nature and Science Center, because Amy loved animal, animals and loved to learn and of course to the Community Fund for AMY to protect the children of the present and the future. We feel that donations here in these two places would serve as a tribute to all those who have helped in the search for our Amy. We don't have anything else to say except thank you, Cleveland, for all your efforts, for all your hope, for all your support, for all your caring, and bless you. Bay Village school officials had made some preparations for this day everyone wished would never come. Teachers tenderly answered any questions the children had, and the middle school added four counselors to its usual two. To share honestly and openly with the students what had happened and provide them the opportunity to respond in an open, honest fashion, and to assure them that what they were feeling as a result of today, as a result of the information they received, Day was okay. 
The halls were noticeably quieter, a sign the students have learned a disturbing lesson about life and the tragedy it sometimes holds. Oh, it's a mixture of um, a variety of emotions. Um, there's some, uh, yeah, of course, a great deal of loss and, and sadness. There's some denial that you know this can't happen. It, it can't be true. There's uh, frustration because the uh, murder hasn't been found. There's a lot of anger over that too. Uh, but there's also a, a bit of a sense of relief that Amy is not suffering, that Amy has been found, that she's back here, and, and she's not enduring any more pain. Amy became everybody's child. Her playful grin endeared us to her, but tattered ribbons now remind us of the ugliness, not the hope. But counselors urge parents not to let Amy's horrible murder make them overprotective of their children's lives. We don't want to scare our children to think that every adult is a stranger but we do want them to we want to teach them that it's okay to say no to some adult and it's okay to be actually rude to a stranger if you need to be parents teachers and religious leaders will be helping youngsters cope with their fears and questions for a long time yet counselors know that many of the questions will never be answered their goal was to be prepared and to just get the students through this day. Well, they did it, and they'll do it again tomorrow and the next day until the students accept and understand Amy's tragic departure from their lives and until they can continue on with their own. In Bay Village, I'm Barbara Serrano reporting for the 10 o'clock news. The bell at St. John Cathedral in downtown Cleveland began to toll at the height of rush hour. But instead of rushing home, many downtown workers and shoppers shifted gears, taking time out to pay their respects to a child whose loss has touched us all. Because I feel concerned for children, children who are abused, uh, children who are molested, and I want to pray for um, Amy. I would like to pay a respect for little Amy and um, her family. And also, um, I'm very angry for what happened, especially that it's so close to my community that I live in West Lake. And there were also family members, many coming from out of state, like Blanche McNulty. This whole thing had to be a tremendous shock for the entire family. It was. It's terrible. It's something that just couldn't heal. Hopefully now it will. Inside, the crowd stood in solemn silence for the hour-long mass. After months of hoping and praying for the safe return of young Amy, their worst fears had been realized. We come together, first of all, then, to pray for one another, to pray for the eternal life of Amy, and for all those who have been violently taken from us. In Bay Village, porch lights were burning brightly tonight from 7 to 10. It was a tribute to Amy. It's touched me very, very deeply. Um, I feel for this family tremendously, and uh, I feel very worried for the safety of all the children in Bay and, and everywhere. And at Bay Village Presbyterian Church, several hundred people gathered for a memorial service in Amy's hometown. Many began lining up as early as an hour before it started. A number of law enforcement officials, including the FBI, were here for tonight's memorial service. In addition to paying their respects, there was also the gruesome outside possibility that Amy's killer might be among those who came to pay their respects. In Bay Village, David Lane reporting for the 10 o'clock news. Uh, normally the children call me at work when they get home from school so that I know they're safe. Um, my, my son called as usual. Um, he said Amy was not home yet. Thank you. Um, I said, well, that's all right. I've given her permission to stay after school for a, a choir practice. And the uh, next thing that happened was Amy called. Um, I had assumed she was at home. Uh, nothing seemed highly unusual about the phone call, uh, except in retrospect, of course. Um, I was extremely busy, and sometimes they have a chance to chat too long. So uh, I you know, hung up thinking everything was all right. And when I got home from work, my son said, you know, Mom, Amy's still not home. And he said, I passed her bicycle in the uh, uh, bike rack at school at 4.30. I knew something was wrong because Amy is an exceptionally reliable child, very responsible for her age. Uh, so I went to uh, the school. I couldn't rouse the janitor, so I went directly to the police department, and they had a squad meet me 
and uh, they searched the school. This is by, th this time, what time is it? Uh, approximately 6.15, 6.30. And the time she had called you? Approximately 3.30. All right, three hours have passed. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, after that, they asked me to uh, go home and wait for a phone call. They had asked me, do you think she went to a friend's house? Uh, could she be doing something else? And I said, no, absolutely not. I know my daughter. She wouldn't do that without asking permission. And furthermore, she would not leave her bicycle in the rack. Uh, by 8 o'clock that evening, uh, we had officers at our home uh, asking a lot of questions. They did, in fact, determine that Amy was not a runaway. She had plenty of access to lots of money. Uh, all of her clothing and articles were there, except for what she wore at school. And um, fortunately for us, they didn't wait the proverbial 24 hours. Uh, persons that live in our city uh, who work for the FBI and were not on duty at the time volunteered their time early Saturday morning. And since then, we've been very fortunate with uh, real in-depth, dedicated persons working uh, to bring her home. There was a lot of hurt and a lot of pain, and plenty of tear-stained faces. They stood still, clutching their own children, imagining the agony such a tragedy must have put on the Mahalabi family. How could pictures like these ever be forgotten? Officials believe Amy's body was dumped by her abductor, who may have also been her killer. The investigation to find who was responsible is still active. I specifically chose this particular site for a number of reasons. But from this day forward, Amy's mother um, wants those who have worked so hard and grieved so hard for her to begin to repair their own city hall. Amy was. She is gone. But I would ask of everyone here, and those who can't be here, let's stop living in the shadow of Amy's tragedy. We must look forward. We must put a smile on our face, learn from this tragic event, but not wallow in the sadness. As a living memorial, a tree was planted, a star magnolia, adjacent from the shopping mall where Amy was kidnapped. It will bloom pink buds and open into white blossoms. We pray that you would continue to guide those who search for her killer. But Lord, I pray that more than ever, your love will be felt by the Mahaljeviks, by those who love them and care for them, and by our community. We dedicate this tree and this monument to her memory. But Lord, we thank you that she lives on in our hearts, and that we do remember her, and we remember each other. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.